Welcome back. The 2017 Africa CEO Forum Awards picks Mohamed Dewji, that's the group CEO of METL, as the CEO of the year. Well, Mohamed Dewji beats off competition from business heavyweights across the continent to take home one of the biggest awards in Africa's private sector. Actor Babaka, who was crowned a young CEO of the year for her female leadership skills as executive director of Sadima, Senegal's leading agribusiness group. The award recognizes a promising young African business leader under 45 years old. Egypt-based Elswedi Electric received the African Company of the Year award, while the award for African Bank of the Year went to Morocco's leading Atijari Wafa Bank, ranked Africa's fourth largest bank with over 7 million clients and more than 16,000 employees in 24 countries. Now let's bring things back home and Nigerians are anxiously waiting for the outcome of the Central Bank of Nigeria's Monetary Policy Committee meeting which ends this afternoon. But while we await the governor of the CBN, Mr. Godwin Imifiel's announcement, let's see what impact the CBN's decisions are likely to have on the commodities market. And to discuss this with me is Bolanle Olutosi, who is a research analyst at Financial Derivatives Company. Thanks for joining us, Bolanle. Thank you for having me. So in less than an hour or so, the CBN governor is expected to announce the outcome of the NPC meeting. So what should we expect, especially with regards to the impact of their decisions on the commodities market? Okay, so briefly, um, if they do, um, regarding the outcome, if we find that the most likely scenario is that they would maintain status quo, because it's, it's quite hasty to, you know, either reduce or increase interest rates. But then there's... With maintaining status quo, we don't see that this has any um, direct impact on commodity prices in the short term. But then the, another likely scenario is for them to reduce interest rates. And if they do this, you know, the, the short term impact is that, you know, demand increases, savings, savings, savings reduces, and then this increases um, commodity prices. But then in the medium to long term, borrowing costs would, you know, would have reduced. And then it's to take some time before manufacturers adjust, you know, to these lower borrowing costs, which feeds into prices and then reduces prices. So it just depends on which effect is greater. So on one hand, you have a situation where from the direct, from the manufacturer side, prices come down. But from the demand side, you know, prices increases. So um, in the short term, this happens. And then in the medium to long term, we see prices coming down. Well, fiscalists are calling for a cut in interest rates, but considering global situational factors, do you think it's a good time to lower interest rates? Um, well, I don't think it's a good time to lower interest rates. And the simple reason is because um, with the economic you know, growth plan that we have, borrowing is a major part of it. And to to attract, you know, investors from around the world, our interest rates need to be, you know, competitive and it needs to be attractive for them. Um, regarding the U.S. interest rates, you know, they just increase interest rates by 25 basis points. Their, you know, they, their country becomes more attractive for these investors. So, you know, while, while competing with them, we need to, you know, we don't need to necessarily increase the interest rates, but be careful about how we, you know, reduce and when we do reduce our interest rates. Oh, so, what's your outlook for the interest rate environment in Nigeria? Um, okay, so with the way monetary policy works, they only make decisions based on the fundamentals of the economy. You know, although in inflation has reduced for February, you don't, like the monetary policy wouldn't necessarily, you know, just cut rates immediately to boost, you know, growth. They would need to monitor the, the changes of these you know, economic variables over time, particularly inflation and then GDP growth, before deciding what to do. So if inflation follows the same trend, you know, it reduces, we're seeing like GDP figures, you know, increasing, we're slowly re removing ourselves from this recession, we should see monetary policy leaning towards an accommodative stance. But otherwise, you know, they would either, you know, maintain status quo, because, you know, you don't want to shock the economy by increasing interest rates despite the fact that we're in a recession so over time if depending on the fundamentals of the economy if they're going well for us we should see um, the monetary policy easing you know interest rates now away from nigeria's monetary policy let's look at 
the global oil market. Now, you guys at the FDC say that global oil prices might transition to a new resistance below $50 per barrel, and that's due to higher production in the U.S. Can you tell us more about that? Okay, so it's not, it's not surprising. We've been here before, so it shouldn't be any shock to us. You know, and um, U.S. increasing um, increasing production, we, we can't change that. You know, we have nothing, we, we, we can't impose, you know, what they do with their oil production. OPEC has tried to react by, you know, mentioning the fact that they would, um, they're more, most likely going to, you know, um, increase their level of cuts. But Nigeria, as we stand, our main our importance shouldn't be focused on those external factors that we cannot change. You know, our main, our main focus should be on our oil production. You know, our oil production stands at, you know, 1.6 million barrels per day at the moment. Although this has increased from 1.5 um, last year, you know, we still need to get to our 2.2 million barrels per day target. At the moment, Shell um, oil field has been closed for maintenance. Focados has also been closed for maintenance. What's with, there's still the risk of the Niger Delta insurgency. You know, these are factors that we need to pay close attention to. So we do not expect, you know, production to increase on, up until like the end of the second quarter. And if if this, you know, trend doesn't, you know, change after the second quarter, then we do have a problem. Regarding oil prices, there's nothing we can do about that. Our benchmark is at $45, um, $45 um, dollars per barrel. So we're still great, you know, we're still good you know, based on that, because they still imagine that. But then our oil production needs to be boosted up, and that's, that's the, the matter at hand. Thanks again, Bolan Lee, for sharing your thoughts with us. Bolan Lee Olutuse is an analyst at the Financial Derivatives Company. We're moving on now. The World Bank has announced plans to lend Tanzania $2.4 billion over the next three years to finance infrastructure projects. Tanzania is seeking financing for infrastructure projects as part of its plans to transform in the country into a regional transport and trade hub. President of the World Bank, Mr. Jim Yong Kim, and Tanzania's President, John Magufuli, have also signed documents on three World Bank-funded projects worth $780 million aimed at improving public infrastructure. East Africa's second biggest economy wants to profit from its long coastline and upgrade its rickety railways and roads to serve the growing economies in the land-rocked herds of Africa. Big gas finds in Tanzania and oil discoveries in Kenya and Uganda have turned East Africa into an exploration hotspot for oil firms, but transport infrastructure in those countries has suffered from decades of underinvestment. And in Egypt, the largest listed bank, the Commercial International Bank, says it has finalized the sale of a near 75% stake in its investment banking arm to a consortium of local and foreign investors. The deal is worth 710.2 million Egyptian pounds, and that's about $39.5 million. And that's our program today. Many thanks for watching. I am BC Adebayo.